man. I was the mission coordinator. And then after some time, I had an encounter. And I saw my father. He was riding this popular Hausa Okada. They call it Vespa. And to my surprise, he was, he was riding it without anybody on the back seat. And then I saw myself sitting on his neck. And when I came out of that vision, the Lord told me it's time to go to Makodi. Now, when I saw that vision, inside that vision, we left that scene. I saw myself with him in a plane. And when we tore, we came back with a, lo a trailer load of harvest in Makodi. And while we were trying to offload, we couldn't. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, it's time to go to Makodi. I went to Makodi, and I spent close to two years. I didn't know daddy was observing me. His first interaction with me was money. He said, I want to send you to Uganda. And it's not for anything. I want you to go. If you stand the test of time, and you don't sleep with any woman and come back, you would have learned the song of elders. You would have learned the song of elders. That word never left my mind. And even though I couldn't make it, I never made it to Uganda, that word stick in my mind. So in the face of temptation, I know that I'm on a journey of learning the song of elders. And it has kept me pure. It has kept me on this path. I want to celebrate my father. Please, Apostle Chinedu, my covenant brother, is in the house with his wife celebrating. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, the moment is here. In the remnant clan, there is one. One with the voice of one. <laughs> the field marshal. The field marshal. Before daddy start, my mom is also in the house. Please, celebrate my mother. church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manin which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul and as they ministered unto the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the walk whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed to Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Hallelujah. The story of the book of Acts of the apostles cannot be adequately told except we see the two the two pedestals of the sending ministry. Reduce my volume a little on this microphone. The first set of apostles were dispatched by Jesus himself and Peter was notable among that company. What was happening in the book of Acts was that God was beginning to move his headquarters from Jerusalem 
and to move to Antioch. But in order for Antioch to come to that stature, that point of ranking, where they can send men forth, there was an upgrading that had to take place in order for that apostolic house to send men forth in the name of the Holy Spirit. If you check the council of Antioch, you will notice something about that council. The first council that was established in Jerusalem, every member of that council was a Jew. The difference about this council in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 1 is that you find a man called Lucius. Lucius is from Cyrene and Cyrene is part of ancient day Libya. The thing about this council was that it captured the continent of Africa. Apart from Acts chapter 8, where Philip began his ministry and had encounter with the utopian eunuch, the next mention of the continent of Africa was Lucius. He was on the conclave of this arrangement that was set in motion. This conclave had a more international outlook than the previous conclave. The thing about Judaism was that it was meant for the Jews. The work of God in the New Testament was supposed to be a universal and a global initiative. But because of issues of conceptualization the apostolic trust that was in Jerusalem had a deficiency because they could not see beyond the district of the Jews until persecution came to disperse them. The persecution that came to disperse them began to move the functionaries and the resources of God that were in the headquarters to a place called Antioch. The apostolic base of Antioch carried all the colors that was necessary to promote a global invasion of the gospel of God. So it is always said among theologians that the true launching pad of apostolic ministry with the goal of covering the globe was Antioch. If you look carefully, you will see that even though the Nigerian church has a lot of apostolic capacity, but our measures and our strengths have been localized by the concept of denominations. So we have so many systems at work, but they are tied to that arrangement. And part of what God will need to do in order to move us to the next phase of influence of the continent is that the Antioch model will be re-established. And in this Antioch model, we are going to have diversity. You see, for instance, if I pioneer a ministry and I'm a teacher, I will compel everybody to operate in the crucible of my ordination, whether or not they are called to function that way. And our concept of covering became cloning. And in cloning, no form of empowerment can be achieved with that model. In the council that we have in Antioch, we see diversity. And all the required colors to bring profit to the kingdom of God, territorially, internationally, continentally, and globally, was captured in the arrangement that we see in Acts 13. In fact, that was the first time an African was recommended for a leadership position in the church of Jesus. Lucius of Cyrene from Libya. It is from this point 
that Africa was able to secure a spot of, on, on the platform of possibilities as, long as, as far as the business of the gospel was concerned. After the fall of Noah, there were only three families that God had to work with. Family of Shem, family of Ham, and the family of Japheth. You will notice that God began with the family of Shem, the Jews, the people from the Middle East. Because all the twelve apostles were Jews. And so much took place in that arena until he moved to Europe. When we trace the history of Christianity, Pentecostal Christianity, we cannot but make reference to a man called Pastor Sidney Elton from the United Kingdom. Because the pendulum of the apostolic momentum of the kingdom was in Europe. Most of the investments that were made to extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God came from that quarter. Whereas the Jews were the sons of Shem, the Europeans were the sons of Japheth. And the pendulum moved from Europe to the United States of America and the major players of the gospel were Americans for a long time. Still the sons of Japheth. And the reason why the sons of Ham were relegated to the background was because, even though by birthright they were in second place, was because of the curse that came through Noah. But it came to pass that when Hedrin that condemned Jesus to death through a doctrine of necessity that was formulated by the high priest. That it is better for a man to die, one man to die, than for a whole nation. Because there was no provision in the Torah to condemn Jesus to death. They condemned him to death by a doctrine of necessity that was formulated by the chief priest. When the case went to court under Roman law, headed by Pilate, you see, the Sanhedrin was the Jewish ruling council, and he was condemned to death in that in that forum. When he happened, there was no provision in law, Roman law by which Jesus could be prosecuted, so Pilate took advantage of an ancient custom that provides the possibility of the release of a criminal condemned to death and the people were given the opportunity to choose which one of those criminals will be set at liberty there was no provision from the roman law that could convict jesus of a crime are you there in executing the will of pilate Jesus had lost blood at several points and he was going to die before God got her. And so heaven had to make an arrangement for some form of support to be made available to him. Because the sons of Shem had rejected him, the sons of Japheth had condemned him to death. It was only the son of Ham that was available. And that's why it was Simon from Cyrene that had to bear the cross of Jesus and to take it to Golgotha. This was a prophetic sign that the accurate gospel of the kingdom would be preached by the sons of Ham. At the end of the age, pedestaling the continent of Africa as the spot of focus of heaven at this critical moment in the history of the church of Jesus. So the pendulum moved from the sons of Shem because of the 12 
the apostles moved to Europe, moved to the United States of America, and this is Africa's time of focus. So that which began with Lucius was to reveal that we had a place in decision making about extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. It was in those days that pure apostolic ministry was born by the hand of the Holy Spirit. And they began to tour into places where the gospel had not been preached. You need to see the mastery with which Apostle Paul confronted idolaters, confronted philosophies, and he pedestaled the gospel of the kingdom as a valid option in the market of philosophy and ideas. He spoke in mass heal with so much utterance that even the learned and the scholars they had to bow their hearts in repentance to the wisdom with which he spoke. Nations were shaped. Whole regions were converted by the efforts of just a few people that had their bearing and their foundation at Antioch. Today, we fulfill a right. The Lord has raised an apostolic company, a homegrown apostolic company in the landscape. And many disciples have evolved from that cantonment. Tonight, we want to pour the blessings of that house upon him, upon his wife. Knowing fully well the import of this season that we have come into. And how that God is putting responsibility on the continent of Africa to lead the way in revival. To restoring that which is lost in the continents and in the territory. We believe that because of the strategic position of Nigeria in this whole spiritual mix that God will remember us and heal our territory. Oh my God. If you are still here, I'd like you to stretch forth your hand in the direction of this, this man of God. That his voice will rise from this wilderness and many will turn unto righteousness. And a new era will be born even here tonight. We come with the blessings of Jesus Christ. The enabling grace by which we were called, we come with it. To strengthen you. Oh my God. That the thing that posed to be a limitation to the ministers of the gospel in these parts will have no power over you. Cry and pray for him. Bless him. Bless him. For you will mount up with wings like the eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Your voice will be heard. For though thy beginning be small, thy later end, it shall greatly increase. For the hand of God will be upon you continually. We come to strengthen you, to strengthen your knees. To strengthen your vocal cord, to strengthen your utterance. That day comes. That day comes upon you where you will raise your head and the Lord will cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you. Kill abosemite. La to kombe la suke pa kudagale. Bless kombe la shike ya. Kurambo saka kunde kadila. <laughs> Let your voice rise. Lift up your heads on your gates and be down lifted up, ye everlasting doors and the king of glory. Is a 
come in the king of glory he shall be made manifest lift up your heads of your gates and be down lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory he shall come in For all the sons of a true house have a better right. And today I come to deliver unto you your portion. I stay up in your spirit that which is apostolic that which is prophetic that which sees that which discerns that which deciphers that which makes for wisdom I stare I stare in your vessel hey. You. Let the sons of strangers stand and build your walls. Let men and women go out of their ways to be a blessing to you. I give you your scepter. You will ride on horseback in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. I take away from you every snare every reproach every limitation you will ride on horseback the Lord will make you plenteous in all things he will give you a voice to speak over the territory your voice will be heard in the name of Jesus I stand to disarm every power of darkness that seeks to challenge your calling challenge your anointing challenge your capacity in the name of Jesus Christ I say arise upon you and Gentiles will come into thy light and kings into the brightness of thy rising I bless you I bless you I bless you I bless you in the name of Jesus I bless you I strengthen you oh my God that as you hold his hands, it, your hands will not be weary. May the Lord enlarge your cause and be gracious unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. As the Lord has raised you to be a helpmeet, a shield, an altar of grace to his servant. So today I strengthen you that you will be beautified by the glory of God. Oh, you will not walk in darkness. Grace and peace is your portion. In 
the name of Jesus. And so Lord tonight in the territory of Kubwa we come to strengthen your servant. In the place where wherein he walked, let him run. In the place wherein he ran, let him fly. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Before you sit, I'd like you to speak in the Holy Ghost for a moment of time. Molena hi ke salimo kombre. Yai lo presko felanta iga mambre oske telehenda baboria. Yesko se sasila brenda konde babulo koto minasania. Yai kombre si kamena ile. La oske tembre heska bobo diatila. Eka pronto kope babatala. La is compra mena isa letame. Lanto ke la isca baba bondala. Ya la 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 baba sua capande. Oh, si capres cope la pude. La wapala. La wasali bongo bola. La wasi copras que tabena cadere. Indoma ampresca bobo si capresca ite. Bale a sindo bongo bagaba kote bala Yante ta boko yame Yante ta shaka bonda bakatane Oh Lord Oh Father We give you praise We give you glory We exalt your name In Jesus' mighty name. Now I want to bless you, the congregation, in, a, in one minute. Because the messenger that will bring the word today is my friend, evangelist Peter from Brazil. But I want to bless, I want to bless somebody. I want to bless somebody. Oh, you will not fail. <laughs> You have crossed, you have crossed. Ika kobe mama. Now, there's somebody I'm looking for. And I've been told how to find the person. So give me that. Give me this water. No, the one that is room temperature. Now, please permit me. Let me be foolish. Huh? There's a, somebody I'm looking for.
there is an atmosphere already here please you would not like to lose this atmosphere you're speaking tongues praying tongues praying tongues praying tongues if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost praying tongues for one minute Pray in tongues for one minute. Sprati zamani varasi yatani. Thank you for betting a great destiny tonight. Thank you for betting a great apostolic move tonight. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. You may please be seated. Our time is fast spent, so I'm going to run. Just a few minutes I'm going to spend here. My brother and my friend has set the ball rolling and in fact i'm going to borrow perspective from what we learned this morning some of you were in the service i was heavily blessed and for me it's a huge honor it's a huge privilege even though he's my friend i don't take it for granted when i am around him because god has raised this man a global voice God has raised him a global voice and we are happy to be associated with this oil God bless you sir thank you so much I want to thank God for Apostle Victor God bless you and your wife God bless you it's a huge blessing and you will not feel I join my voice to say you will not fail. I join my brother to declare over you, you will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Happy to see Prophet Joel, a rising voice. You will not fail, Joel. You will not. You will not. God has given you a voice and there is something you represent for this generation. And the fullness of that will manifest in the name of Jesus. So, looking at a perspective that Apostle shared this morning, and he brought something very terrific. And I saw that scripture today in another light. <laughs> Let's... Um, to Revelation chapter 4. We need light. And this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was that it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. It means it was a trumpet that was blowing. <laughs> Did you know that? I, it was from this morning's message, I was able to interpret the scripture. Now, I think you don't understand where I'm going yet. What was sounding was a trumpet. There was no literal conversation. But there was a light he sustained to be able to transliterate that which sounded like a trumpet as a vocal conversation. So if you were there, all you would have heard was a trumpet sounding. But the man heard, come up hither. Now the difference between you and him is light. The light. There was a light he sustained to be able to interpret the sound of a, a trumpet. It means that there are it is possible for so many conversations to be going on at the same time but you are not able to decipher for lack of light 
the one that spoke to me sounded like a trumpet. It was a trumpet that was communicating. But I could hear come up either. And I will show the things which must be hereafter. It also means that the deliverables in God's realm can only be downloaded if you have gained certain altitude. There are certain things you cannot download from the realm of God if you have not been able to gain a certain altitude. So where you are is too, you are too low. And if you remain there, you will not be able to see these things. If you continue at this altitude, there are things that are supposed to be shown you that you cannot be able to access. So for you to be able to download them, you must come up. And the way we travel upwards is by light. That journey is by light. So your altitude is determined by the light you have been able to sustain. I'm saying that the light that is at your disposal determines the altitude you gain. And it is the altitude you gain in the realm of God that determines your downloads. There are certain things you can never have access to if you have not gained altitude. You know, in Exodus chapter 16, God told Moses that he was going to send them bread. Now, follow me meticulously. Note that what God sent was a heavenly bread. But what they called it was manna. Now, manna means what is this? God didn't send manna. It was the lack of light that made them give it that nomenclature manna. What God gave was bread and that bread was made in heaven. In fact, Jesus came and said to them in John chapter 6, your fathers did eat manna. What was Jesus saying? What was given to them was bread and the intention was to establish life. But they took it, they collected it as manna and died in the wilderness. So what was supposed to give them life killed them. It means that whatever heaven gives as pure as it is, as powerful as it is, if it is not collected appropriately, it has the potential to kill. Even though the intention is to give life. So what was supposed to give them life killed them because they, they took it as manna. So Jesus was saying to them, I was that manna, I was that bread. But your fathers received it as manna. And so when Paul began to give a lecture in the church in Corinthians, you will discover that he began to teach them about the mistake of the fathers in the wilderness in chapter 10. Just to introduce to them the concept of the Holy Communion in chapter 11. Because the people were repeating the same mistake. Even though that bread was holy, that bread was to institute life, they took it as manna, ate and died. Now, they were taking the communion, which was supposed to be a holy food, as normal bread. And Paul said, because of that, you've been, most of you are sick. The bread was supposed to give them life. The blood was supposed to give them life. But some of them, you know the way they go for occasion here? People even hide some malt inside their bag to go home. You know, they come to party and they gather food. That was how they were taking the communion. So Paul was saying, what you are taking is holy. But because you are not able to discern, there is no light. You lack the light to discern the significance of this food. Instead of giving, the blood was supposed to give them life. Now it is killing them. He said, most of you are asleep because you could not discern. And the reason they could not discern was the lack of light. Was it because they are not able to discern the body. So if you look at chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians and chapter 11, Paul was elucidating 
the event of Exodus chapter 16. Till today they call it manna. God did not send manna. God sent a heavenly bread. So in case, in case you are saying God sends manna, God never sent manna. It was the people that called it manna. So be careful what you name a spiritual encounter. People sing and say, man, you are wrong. You are, you are making, it's the same error they committed. It was lack of light that made them call a heavenly food, manna. Manna means what is this? Do you know that eventually when Jesus came, they didn't recognize him until today they are looking for a Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah. They didn't recognize Jesus when he now came bodily. Your fathers did eat manna. What they ate was manna. They didn't take it. In fact, the allocation was 24 hours. If it exceeded 24 hours, it turned into a poison. So it means that a grace that is not well appropriated can be poisonous. A heavenly investment that is not well appropriated can become poisonous. They were not able to discern that food that came. And so they lost it. In one day, 23,000 died. The Bible says they were, they, murmured, they were destroyed in the wilderness. And I began to think upon these scriptures. I now discovered that there is an entity of the Trinity that is saddled with the responsibility to bring light. And so because of our time, we will run quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's do from verse 15. So you can now see that the major problem was the lack of light for discernment. For discerning that which God sent. They gave it a wrong name. And consequent upon that, they were destroyed in the wilderness. Paul had to come to the church in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, which we have broken down, to tell them the error of the fathers in the wilderness, which they were already committed for lack of light, for not being able to discern the body of Christ. So what was supposed to initiate life, give life, made them weak made them sick and eventually killed them Paul continues his lecture now in 2 Corinthians but even unto this day when Moses is read by the way please permit me to digress a little by the way if you check that 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Moses said that generation was baptized into Moses. Now, do you know the implication of that? It means that what the Holy Ghost is to this church today was what Moses was to that generation. Now, have you thought of that kind of responsibility? A whole generation was baptized into Moses. As you are to be led by the Holy Spirit, Moses was saddled with a singular responsibility to lead that generation. It means disobeying the voice of Moses was sequel to disobeying the voice of God. Now, let me put it in a clear language. Moses was like their Holy Spirit. They were baptized into Moses. Moses was their compass. Meanwhile, Moses told them what was coming was bread. Moses never said manna. They were the ones that said, investigate the scripture. They were the ones that said manna. Till today they call it manna. It means that they abdicated themselves from the responsibility of obeying the voice of the one they were baptized into. And anything outside of that equation that God had arranged was going to lead them to destruction. Now you begin to wonder what manner of man was Moses that God could give him that singular I began to wonder a man that had the revelation of the book 
of the Lamb's book of life, even in the Old Testament. He was the one that cornered God and said, if you destroy these people, they will mock you. He was a better intercessor than Abraham. If he was the one that, that interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, probably God would have spared that city. He had more techniques. He said, God, and God reason. He said, Aye, that's true. You're making a point. Can you be, be able to bring God to a corner where he can look at Kubu and say, No, because we have found a witness, we will spare this land. There is a witness that God is raising for himself in Nigeria. Oh my God, I see something in the spirit. Something is about to happen tonight. The man said to God, he said, see, you can't kill them now. Because if you do, if you do, they will mock you. They say, you brought them out to kill them. At the point he said, God, erase my name from the book. That book he was talking about was the Lamb's book of life. And God responded to show that what he was saying was accurate. God said to him, I will not delete your name from the book but the one who sins against me so even before the manifestation of God as man he already had a preview of the book of life he knew about it in the Old Testament he knew that that was a book that man saw the back of God it was not the literal back of God he saw he said Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, cause me to see you. I said, no man can see me and live. But I'm going to give you a technology. Go to the cliff of the mountain, of the rock, and stay there. That is Christ. Because no man can see God outside of Christ. So that was the typology. When he hid on the cliff that is Christ, he saw the back of God, not the literal back of God. He saw eternity past. That was why he could write the book of Genesis. That was why he could tell us how they hid him in the basket and cast in the river. He saw it. He wrote about how his father married his mother. He wrote about how God created the heavens. And he saw eternity past. The Bible calls him the meekest man. Now, that was the man that generation was. The Bible says... God baptized the generation into Moses. Moses was a God. God gave man is that singular responsibility to lead a people such that his word was the word of God. It was light. I now discovered what, what he discovered was the testimony. That was that message you preached this morning. What he had was the testimony of Jesus. It's not a third, third hand information. He received the testimony of Jesus. He was able to navigate the whole generation. And they were baptized into him. Now, the Bible says that till this day, when Moses is read, <laughs> he became a book. When Moses is read, this man is now a book that is read. There is a generation that is waiting to read you. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm still thinking upon it. When Moses is read, the veil is, up, is, is upon their heart. It was still this veil that made them not to recognize what was bread what was the celestial bread? They called manna. There was a veil. There was a light they didn't have. There was a light that is conspicuously absent. And because that light was absent, they called it manna. What is this? No matter how a spiritual investment, no matter how powerful a spiritual investment is, if you don't understand it, it has no potential potential to bring any change, to bring any impact. It has no potential to bring any impact. No, no, none. No matter how powerful it is, if it is not understood, 
If it is not well interpreted, it has no power to bring any change. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, we are talking about light. One, saddled with his responsibility to bring light. The veil, in the presence of the veil, light cannot manifest. And there is one that is saddled with the responsibility of undoing the veil. Removing the veil. He is called Lord. But for you to be able to interpret this scripture, you must be able to understand the dynamics of the Trinity. Because it is not everywhere you see Lord in the scripture that refers to Jesus. Because Lord simply means Oga, Master. So you must be able to understand the context for which that word Lord is mentioned for you to be able to bring perspective to it. For example, in Psalm 111 verse 3 of us two there about, David said, the Lord said to my Lord, there are two Lords here. So who is the Lord of David and who was the Lord that said to the Lord of David? The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So we have two lords here. The Lord of David is Jesus. The Lord that spoke to the Lord of David was the Father. So in one scriptures we have two lords. Because for you to understand the Trinity, you must understand that the three in fact, Colossians chapter 1 verse 19, in case you are waiting for the day you will get to heaven, and when you get to heaven, you will see the Father seated, and then you see Jesus, and then you see one wind blowing. The, no, you, are, you, you will be disappointed. Colossians 1 19, it has pleased the Father that in him should dwell the fullness. In him, in him should dwell the fullness. So when you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father, and you have seen the Spirit. In John chapter 6, he said to, to Philip, he said, Ah, you have stayed this long with me and you do not know the Father. Don't you know that every time you see me, you have seen the Father? I am the express image of the Father. Now, even nature teaches us this. When water is subjected to zero degree Celsius, it's blocked. When you subject it, to a higher temperature, it becomes what? Liquid. Then you subject it again. When it evaporates, it becomes what? Gas. All water. H2O. Can become gas. Can become liquid. Can become what? Solid. Same nature. So are you, are you surprised why God is the Father? He is the Son he is the Holy Spirit. Same God. Same H2O. It's gas. It's solid. It's water. So there is perfect unity. He said, he dwells. It has pleased the Father that in the Son should dwell the fullness. It means that Jesus is an encapsulation of the Trinity. The Father is in him. The son is in him. Now, he introduces a lord here. And we want to investigate which lord is he talking about. Because this lord, no, go back. Go back, go back, go back to. This lord here, whoever this lord is, there is something we know. He's saddled with the responsibility of unveiling. Right? So, let's investigate who, which lord is this. Which Lord are we talking about here? Because in the absence of the operation of this Lord, light cannot manifest. And as long as light is absent, spiritual things cannot be discerned. And as long as spiritual things cannot be discerned, destruction is inevitable. In fact, I discovered that the only advantage we have over darkness is light. Over Satan is light. 
my apostle said something that changed my life today. He said, oh, you think that your car scratched or you fell down and you stood up. That's the ultimate, that was the ultimate plan of Satan. You are joking. Is Satan that jobless? That you have a new car and you are driving. Somebody scratch you. Satan is that jobless to just scratch your new car. He wanted to kill you. But he miscalculated. And the reason for that miscalculation is that he lacks light. So every time there was a predicament that was arranged by hell, we didn't find expression. It is an on account of Satan's lack of light. And so it was still that same lack of light that made him kill Jesus. And today he has so many Jesuses to contend with. Tell somebody standing by your side, you have advantage, my friend. Stop looking bewildered. See, if light will cost, go for light. Anything it will cost you, go for light. I made up my mind today. I said, Lord, I will go. You see, this light is in degree. If it is prayer, I will pray. If it is fasting, I will fast. Any investment I will need to put in to acquire light. Say, come up. Say, come up, Peter. Where you are, the ground is too tired of you. There is a place waiting for you at the top. When you acquire light, the law of gravity cannot work. The law of gravity loses its potency, potency over your life. The veil shall be removed. Now, let's see who this Lord is. Because I, I said to you, certainly it's not Jesus. Verse 17 reveals that. Oh God, give me 17. Now, somebody say now. The Lord, he wants to make it clear. He said, the Lord I told you in verse 16. That Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because light brings liberty. He brings light. He, bring, he does the job of unveiling. And once there is an unveiling, light comes. And when light comes, liberty is expressed. So he's saying that the Lord here is the spirit. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the one that gives light. He's the one saddled with the, with the responsibility of bringing revelation. Light. So when you turn to him the veil is removed now it means that the Holy Ghost is Lord in the church so that Jesus can be Lord over the church because Jesus cannot be Lord over you if you don't know him Jesus cannot be Lord over you if you don't obey him Jesus cannot be Lord over you if you don't have revelation of him. Now listen to this again. For Jesus to be Lord over the church, over the church, then the Holy Ghost has to be Lord in the church. So he said, where the Lord is, there is liberty. And so we have so many centers that the Holy Ghost is no more is regulated and controlled by the administration of men because the Holy Ghost has gone the Lord in the church is no longer there in fact are, 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 you, are you surprised that the Holy Spirit was the first person of the Trinity that was introduced go to Genesis and there was no mission that God undertook on the earth that was not with the partnership of the Holy Ghost. In creation he was there. At the birth of Jesus he was there. At the baptism, baptismal site of Jesus he was there. At the death of Jesus he was there. The resurrection of Jesus he was there. Pentecost he was there. Every of God's project was not without the Holy Ghost. So he is Lord in the church so that Jesus can be Lord over the church. 
And when his administration has been eliminated from the system, all you have is the veil of men. And I'm sorry to say, I know some of you will be very angry with me now. There are many churches here, many organizations here that the Holy Ghost is no longer there. And that's why they will ask you in Kubwa here to go and jump inside a pool and pay 50000 When you jump inside that kind of pool, you will come out with more demons. You pay 50000 and you're angry. And they tell you, you will type, some of you are already typing, you will type to abuse. You say, you know, there should be unity. It's Satan that is speaking through you. What kind of unity? I hope you know that unity is not conformity. Unity is not iniquity. There is what we call the unity of faith. And, and, and in case you don't know what faith is, the Bible says without it, it is impossible to please God. So when we talk, some of you don't know what faith, when you say faith, faith is not just a possession. Now, let me clear your doubt a little. Oh my, Holy Spirit, help me. You see, the reason why we have not been able to we have not been able to ascend to such a position that God has long waited for is because most of the faces that are celebrated that have become idols in the body of Christ I'm talking about Nigeria particularly they are actually no longer in sync with the Holy Ghost the one who is Lord over those places is no longer the Holy Ghost and because of that, there is a veil. All you are seeing now is man. There is an environment. Listen, I said to you, you see, the, what we call unity of faith. If you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 6, the Bible says, don't go there, please. Let's just still remain in Corinthians. I just want to make reference to that scripture quickly. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible. Now, if you read that scripture without consulting the original manuscript, you will do a lot of disservice in the interpretation. Because that word without has nothing to do with absence of faith as a possession. It is not saying, now, you know, give me something. Give me your phone. Without, without phone, I'm not able to talk to him. That's not it. You have missed it. That word without is carries. In the original it means outside of an environment it then suggests clearly that faith is an environment without his carries now you have your phone check it he says when you are outside this faith it's an environment it's a place in the spirit faith is a place in the spirit it then means that faith is not just a possession it is a location and the location of faith is even much more important than the possession of faith because the possession of faith is not in view if the location of faith is not settled so first of all he said if you are if this place is faith now and you are outside here he said there is no way you can please god no matter how you try so faith is not just you thinking something in your heart ah let me shout no faith is a location first and in that location, there are principles that guide operations there. So God said, outside of this, you cannot please me. If you operate from outside this location. So there are many people that are actually saying, let us come together. Let us do this. They are no longer here. They have left. They are not in that place. That's why if you look at verse 1 of the same Hebrews, it is not actually defining faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is not a definition of faith. It is rather the attitude of faith. Now faith is the evidence, the substance, not seen, things not seen. Tangibilities in the spirit that are not seen. That word in Greek is hypostasis. There are two words, hupo and stasis. Hupo means by. Stasis means side. 
It means that the behavior of faith is that if it has found an intangible promise, if it has located a promise in the spirit, how many of you have seen dog around bone? There is no level of distraction that will make it leave the bone. See, if you have found something, a promise in the spirit, even though it is not tangible yet, it says stand by it until you finish the bone. That's what it is. So Hebrews 11.1 1 is not defining faith. It is the attitude, the behavior of faith. It means that that's why in chapter 10, oh my God, I, I'm feeling something already here. In chapter 10 verse 23 or 26, he said, let us therefore profess the confession of our hope without wavering for he is faithful that promised it's a promise that you have not seen a woman believes that she's going to have a child she has not seen the child but she has started buying children, children material buy uh, baby wears buy. She, there is something intangible she's calling the thing that is not as though it were because she has found it's a profession do you know what profession means profession i'm a doctor i do i i do i do teaching so what we do for a A living is faith. They ask you, what, what is your work? He said, I do faith for a living. It's called. And that is by light. So that's why he said, without this light, it is not possible to come to a place called faith without light. What you call faith is revelation. What bad faith is revelation? So he's saying that if you have no light, you are not entitled to this substance called faith. How can you tell me you have faith? When the one who is Lord over the church is man. So you discover that many things we call faith is emotion. Even though you go to a more shrine and shout, people can still fall under the anointing. Satan can help people fall. So that you will think that God is still there. And so darkness is permeating. Permeating. He said, when the spirit comes, it comes to bring liberty. It comes to unveil. And in verse 18, he said, when this is done, we all, with an open face. Why is it an open face? The Lord has done the unveiling. And so when the face is open now, there is a degree to the light you can receive. And the degree to the light you can receive is determined by how well you focus on the mirror. And I have a problem with this mirror. It's such a mirror that when you look at it, you don't see your image. You see the image of another person. How do you feel when you go to the, when you go to the mirror and you are looking at the mirror, you are seeing the face of another person? He said, when you come to this mirror, you won't see your face. You will see the face of another person. But, and the more you behold the mirror, the more, and as you look, as you face, as you, with, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, you are changed into the same image you are seeing. From glory to glory, even as by the same spirit of the Lord. My question therefore tonight is what level of glory, what level of light have you sustained? So it means that you can look for five minutes and go and eat pandemonium. There's a level of light. But that light cannot interpret all hard sentences. Because the path of the just is like a shining light. The more you behold, and this beholding can be in the place of prayer. This beholding can be in the place of contemplating on the world. It's, you are turned, you are transformed into the same image. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
if you have dwelt long in this place, nobody will see your picture on Facebook and say you look sexy. If they tell you that, just go and be crying. You look sexy and you are happy. They can't see Jesus. It's the, that shows you that who you are beholding is what they will see. So if they say you are sexy, what are you looking at? What have you been looking at? What have you, and you are happy? Some Christians will celebrate it. I say it's a compliment. It's not a compliment. He said disapproval. In those days, they will see a man of God coming and they will say, Yonder cometh a man of God. Yonder cometh, because the glory is conspicuous. It's a product. Oh my God, Lord, if it means dying in your presence, I am ready. But the generation will know that a man has stayed with you. And when they saw them, they took knowledge, even though they were ignorant men, that these ones had been with Jesus. In that place, your educational qualification does not count. What counts is what you have been beholding. Sir, we need men that will take us to this mirror. We need men that will point us to this mirror. Even in the Old Testament, the man called Moses, he was there for 40 days. By the time he came down, they couldn't behold his face. And you have Holy Ghost. I don't know the kind of Holy Ghost you have. That even with the Holy Ghost, you are struggling to cast out a demon. As you behold him, as in a glass. You know, the day I contemplated of this world, but we all, I looked at all the women in the congregation, I said, you should be happy. You should, because in those days, women are segregated. But by the ministry of this Lord, every woman, everybody who names the name of Christ is co-opted, is conscripted into this army. It means whether your menstrual flow is coming or not, you can assess him. In those days, you cannot. Women are not counted. But now he said, we all, no sentiment, no segregation. We all, with open face, that mask has to be removed. Do you know that if you want to infect a community with plague, you don't wear a mask? Why do you wear a mask? To protect. There is a virus you are carrying. It is the virus of the gospel. The mask you are putting on is not making it spread. It's holding it back. Even the people that fabricated COVID-19, some of them, we saw them, they will go intentionally to public spaces and infect it. That was why in Acts 19, the Bible says they took their handkerchiefs. All you needed to take somebody out of the intensive care unit is to throw the handkerchief apron of Paul at the gate of the hospital. Everybody inside will leave. You don't just see a man of God do some. It is not the item. It is the presence he carries. And you, you want to go and try it? Go and try it. In fact, you even, people will live with migraine, with all kinds of sicknesses. He said, with open faces. So, God wants you to infect your society with the gospel, with power. Because as you breathe out, there is power. As you speak, there is power. The one with the mask, the power is contained. Oh my God, I came to tell somebody, there is so much inside of you, but the mask is not allowing it to come out. The mask is not allowing it to find expression. There is a specialist in the Trinity. He is the Lord. He is an expert in unfailing. He is an expert in taking away the mask. And tonight, I see many masks. Many masks. Many masks dropping. That mask could be the mask of immorality. And that is what has sealed, congealed the power of God inside of you. Masturbation could be a mask. Lying spirit, if you tell us good morning, we have to look at the time whether it's really morning. Lying spirit could be a mask. Pornography, if we take a source of the phones of believers here, 
you will cry. Some of the things that are inside. I had a man of God. A sister came to him and said, you know, my husband travels very far and I don't, I want to contain this. He said, ah, that's simple now, bring your phone. The sister gave him the phone. He uploaded, a man of God uploaded pornography and said, anytime your body do, you just use this one whole body. Real life story. I, I like real life story. A man of God. They ran to him for help. He took the phone of the woman, downloaded pornography, and said, You can use this. That one has lost it long ago, but he's still with the title. Okay, let me tell you. The Holy Spirit revealed to me. You know, the problem of some of you here is who laid hand on you. There is a demonic hand that was laid on you, and that has obscured your life. And no matter the investment that heaven is releasing, it's not finding expression. And since they laid hand on you, you have been you have been navigating towards lust and pornography and evil and deep perversion. There will be deliverance for you tonight. Oh, you didn't. It has a good place to say amen. amen. The mask will be removed because we will take our generation by storm. Oh my God, Apostle, there is something we are. There is some. You said something, and I'm saying. There is a dimension of power where we are yet to enter. I will enter it. I want to see my satisfaction will be when I come to a point where I will raise the dead at my leisure. See, is there any place somebody died? Take me there. Where will we go by choice to the mortuary and say, give us the key. We want to bring five people back to life. Is this still not possible? I am believing God for such an inheritance that will come from heaven today that will make you a naked wire. We have so much insulators around. If you want to know whether there is current in the wire, just cut it and step on it. The flesh will burn away tonight. I hear a cry from heaven tonight. I hear a trumpet sound and the Lord is saying the capacity and the ability to decode and dissolve our sentences will be made available tonight ordinations will find expression tonight graces will find expression tonight Abuja will turn to Jesus Kubwa will turn around he said, these two have come to us. These two, that have turned the world upside down. We are going to close shrines. We are going to close business centers. Churches that are business centers. Churches that are shrines. We stop to function. In our lifetime, we will see God move. In our lifetime, we will see the glory of God permeate the environment. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. When he shall turn to the Lord, nevertheless, the veil shall be removed and we will have access to the light. We will have access to the light as we behold that image in a glass. We are transformed into that same image. How much of Jesus have you been transformed into? How much of Jesus can we see? How much of Jesus have you been able to replicate in your space? There is a glory and the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing and dancing and mourning and weeping shall flee away. Oh, it's an army that is rising and the Lord is saying Satan rejoice not, rejoice not rejoice not over my people for when they fall they will rise again when they sit in darkness the Lord shall be a light unto them I came to announce to somebody it doesn't matter your present status I can hear the spirit say rejoice not over me 
Oh, my enemy. For when I fall, I will rise again. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a liar. He told me. Prophet, keep on fighting. We will not stop. There must be resilience. Strength is coming. Because God is about to put Jonathan's victory. The battle is just starting. We are going to put them out of work. Victory will end. For even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Try to hold yourself. The Holy Ghost just spoke to me now. Just hold, hold yourself, hold yourself. The Holy Ghost just spoke to me now. Hold yourself without losing the atmosphere. Listen to this. There is a place of purity in the assessing of power. Now listen, listen, tonight is a serious night because I'm about to pray a prayer. A man of God comes up to say, if there is anybody I have ever defrauded, any woman I have ever touched, come up and make it public. What would have been a matter of celebration became a matter of mockery. That is to show you how the church has degraded. We are victims of degradation. Oga, if God must use you, there must be a place you have secured for purity. It's not out fashioned. You can't be, God is not bankrupt of staffs that He will take delight in using a fornicator, an adulterer. You must make a decisive, you must decide to. Quit sin, immorality. Have hatred for sin tonight. There is a call God is making. Now I stand on this altar and I know it's life. God sent me on an apostolic mission in South America. Since I stand before the Holy Ghost and I speak in the hearing of everybody, this is also going to go to South America. 
if I have ever touched a woman by mistake even by mistake let such a one come out I can stand upon the pinnacle in Brazil and not because oh my god you are mistaken not because I have not they have not every day of your life in such regions you have proposals even from married women and I'm wondering you that have not been able to tame your sexual appetite you are still here and you are fornicating if you go there you will die sir I said I have not touched a woman by mistake I'm not saying that's by mistake I'm saying before the Lord I am on an apostolic mission in South America I am saying that I'm saying this publicly and so if you want to mock me tomorrow you can you are free that I have not even by mistake touched a woman that's not my wife and if you have it if you have and I have many online I have ministered all across Nigeria if you you are a victim of my taking advantage as a minister speak out now so I'm not talking as I'm not speaking as a local champion now I'm speaking now as an international minister that has ministered in different cadres in Africa in I have gone to East Africa I have gone if I have touched any woman in the course of my delivering my assignment let them cry out and God is raising more ministers who can be able so in case you are here you are saying eh, if you say that's your business that's your business I don't care about your opinion if anyone will make a boast let him make it in the Lord yes. And I hope you know that I have not been able to do thus far by my strength. It is because I have depended on him, on the one who can supply us. I've seen him supply strength. I was meant to preach in Brazil, in a city called Thailand, Thailandia, with an interpreter. By midnight, he called me that he was not coming. I speak the truth in the Holy Ghost. I didn't know anything in Portuguese. But let me not just make, of course, if you go, you can know what is calm, go. I, to make an accurate sentence, never gone to school. That was my first year of mission. The Angolan guy called me that he was not coming. The pastor said, it is better you come. Hallelujah. It's a universal language. So when you come, just stand on the pulpit like this and shout, hallelujah. It suffices. At least the people will know that it's not a fraud. That we actually organize the program, but the interpreter failed. But if you don't show up, they will think we defrauded them. I said, okay, I will come. How I wish I can call that pastor now and put it on speaker, the man that invited me. How I wish I can do that. That is a possibility. I would have shown the whole world of the power I am about to introduce you to. He said, come, all the same. I went. In 24 hours, the Holy Ghost taught me how to speak Portuguese. From that day till now, I never required the service of an interpreter again. Some of you will say, how? The Holy Ghost taught me a strange language. You know, I can speak in Portuguese in the highest, in the high. There is no, even among senators, I can speak Portuguese. Now, my Portuguese is not broken Portuguese. It's not pidgin. It's, in fact, I speak it better than I speak English. Proper. Go and check some of my messages in Portuguese. That is the power that is available. The, the Holy Ghost taught me how to preach in a strange language. That was the night I started preaching in Portuguese. And I'm saying that there is a place for purity. Yes, yes. Even when Jesus will come, those that have not known women, there is a special place for them. That never defile themselves with women. This one that you can't see scared. Once you see scared, your body is shaking. You need deliverance tonight. And can I, can I, it's not everybody that should put hand on your head. The easiest demon that can be communicated is the demon of sexual immorality. The demon of perversion is spread fast. And that's why I say, oh, minister, it's not every pulpit you should step on. It's not everybody you should invite, sir. You should be able to, to, to analyze the man's life. 
God wants to raise young men like you who are married and they are contented with their wives. Anything you like do with your wife is yes, not anybody's business. Mm -hmm. If you like sleep with her 10 times a day. But your hand must not touch a strange woman. Now, and let me tell you something. I'm not saying this because I'm supposed to say, there are friends you will have. Just remembering them will caution you. No, you don't, some of you don't understand it. It is not human worship. I'm saying you must have friends around you, people around you. I can't imagine myself going, well, you know, I can't. no, until Jesus come, it can't happen, <laughs> won't. We are not saying that God cannot forgive. We don't want to have that history. You know, this, no. And I know that it is possible to have that victory in Christ. So why should I not maximize it? When you are falling, others are going. Yes, yes. You think they wait for you? I, know. I don't want to be part of those that are falling. He said, take heed, lest you fall. So it means that there is a heed to take, not to fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I prefer that one. Than to quote for me. The righteous fall seven times. I know, as he's falling, others are moving. And I've not also said God doesn't forgive. I hope you know what I'm saying. So if you choose where you want. Me, I choose not to fall. And the reason I choose not to fall is because there is a power he has. Not me. I do not boast in my strength. So that you don't go and cut my message and say, I'm not boasting. I'm saying that God has the power to make me stand. So why should I not tap into that economy? So the Holy Ghost is saying, if there are young men that will be ready to present their hearts as altars of purity, I will move. Young ladies, I will look at the lecture and say, oh, because you have mentioned the matter of sex, you are not worthy to be called sir anymore. And in fact, you can slap him, there's no problem. Once he wants to defile you, there is no, the Bible defends you. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, they removed the prefix. They didn't call him king again. Because you have touched our God. Righteous army. A holy army. Young men that will become blazing examples of righteousness. Purity. Not hyper, not the one that tells you. It doesn't matter, you are now in Christ. Even though you die, sleeping with a woman is first class ticket to heaven. Or guy, you will go to hell. If you die on top of a woman, you are going to hell. Now, you know why? There is no such, show me such example in the Bible. Even Samson repented. He didn't die on top of Delilah. So where will you pull an unbiblical example? Now, it is better for me to get to heaven. I say, okay, okay ah, you would have played life small. Though. I said, okay, I didn't know. I didn't play, but I'm here. <laughs> that for them to say, ah, because of that. Hey. He didn't. So it's a safe theology. It is better for them to say you would have played. You didn't play. Ew. But you are still here. Now for it to be that because you did, we are not coming in. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Can you make it a cry? In my heart. In my heart. To be like Jesus in my I want to think like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to process things like Jesus. Sit like Jesus. Walk like Jesus. And become a blazing example of righteousness. In one minute, can you make that demand? A blazing example of righteousness in my time. And in my generation. A blazing example. A blazing example of righteousness. A blazing example of purity. A 
I place an example. Of the gospel of Christ. Help me Lord. You will not be a bad example. A bad representation of the gospel. Holy must kill of here at this can I. Maska bratola. Maska tembratela. Shaka teka putasketa. Cry, somebody cry. Say, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. Now quickly, you are saying tonight, because I want to pray for some people quickly, quickly, quickly. I have less than five minutes to round up. I want to present my heart as an altar of purity. Now, the, the, the implication is that you are making before God a covenant of purity. You are a young man, you are a young woman, you are a minister of the gospel. If you are a proud man, you don't need to come out. Stay where you are, there's no problem. I'm speaking to young ministers now. Lord, today, I want it to be that in the next 20 years as we meet, I still have a standing testimony of righteousness. Apostle, when we meet tw in 20 years time, we'll still be speaking the same language. You know me, I feel that if you, there are certain things you do, you will not remain the same again. But there's mercy tonight. There's mercy tonight. I'm hearing God say, I will wipe the past. And I want to give you a new slate. A new slate. There are people you will delete from your phone today. Why is it that that girl, anytime you come for a program and you receive fire, she's there to quench it. And you are, you are tired. You have become tired. You, you even you you have you have looked at God, you say, God, you have to you don't too try for me. And today you are tired. You say, Lord, not never again. Oh, I can guarantee you that there is there is a resources available tonight. I will pray for you. Just come to you. Get out of where you are and come here to the front. Only those that are convicted in their heart. Not everybody. I want to make my heart. And out of purity. Never again. The testimony of Christ I will behold and uphold and reproduce as I live. I will never be a representation of a bad example. The matter of sexual immorality ends today, ends today, ends today, ends today. I'm making a covenant of purity. Come. And in case there is no more space, and in case there is no more space, you are making that decision. You will put your right hand on your heart. Those that cannot come to the front, for want of space, keep coming. If there is no more space, right where you are, you can lay your right hand on your heart. Now, those in the front, cry to God. Just cry to God in two minutes. Just cry to God in two minutes. Those of you in the front, put your hands on your heart.
Cry to God, cry to God. Cry to God, cry to God, cry to God. We've come to Calvary where burdens are lifted. The burdens of sin. The burdens of sin is being lifted. And there is a new burden communicated right now. There is a new burden. There is a new burden. There is a new burden. There is a renewal going on. Jesus mighty them. Those of you in the front, just say this silent prayer after me. You don't need to shout. Say today I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. I present my vessel an altar of holiness and purity. By the strength I draw in God's grace and mercy, I make a covenant of purity. Today, and I declare, my vessel is to dispense the eternal purposes of God in purity and in righteousness. So help me God. Now let there be silence everywhere. Just stay where you are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. There are seventeen flags I'm seeing. By the grace of God, I am an apostolic evangelist. My brother and friend is both a teaching and a prophetic apostle. And these mantles are available. I see 17 people. Now, ushers, help me because this is very critical. Ah! Help me. There are 17 of them. Just help me. Please, don't be distracted. There are 17 of them. There are 17 of them. 17 flags of nations. Because God is transporting people. Just help them. Help, help, those, help them. There are 17 of them. There are 17 of them. Yes, there are 17 of them. Yes, okay. Okay, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. There are 17 of them. In the front, behind, everywhere. At the gallery. There are two people at the gallery. There are two people at the gallery. Meanwhile, there are seven, my God, there are seven sisters. There are seven sisters. I'm seeing the same garment that was open in Kuma. Seven sisters. Oh, just help me look out for them. Seven, seven of them. Seven of them are wearing that same garment. That same garment. That same garment is dropping on them. Yes, that is. Yes, make it stronger. Make it stronger. Make it stronger. Make it stronger, make it stronger. My God, my God, my God, my God. There are still five of them. Yes, there are still five of them in the congregation. At the gallery, there are two people there. At the gallery, there are two people there. Somebody check for me. At the gallery, there are two people at the gallery. Check for me there. My God, my God. Maskeli Vataya Maria Tolia. I see the leadership unction of Deborah. The leadership function of Deborah upon a lady by my left hand side. Somebody watch out for that lady because she's going to be a global voice. A global voice. A global voice. My God, just be, be, please be attentive. Be attentive. It's still dropping. It's still dropping. At my left hand side, the angel carrying that oil is still at my left hand side. I see three more people. I see three more people. Watch there. Watch there. Yes, yes, yes. I see three more people. I see three more people. Somebody saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. God is saying, your shortcomings are overruled. He's dropping on you now. My God. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. That's it. Something is still hanging. By my left hand side. Oh, go there. 
but my left hand side something is still hanging something is still hanging something is still hanging yes 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 Shafarapalia. There are four psalmists. Four psalmists I'm seeing. There is a there is a horn from heaven that is being poured out upon four psalmists. The Lord will give them songs in the night. Songs that will transform nations. Where are they now? Now, yes, 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 somebody help, yes, 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 songs in the night, songs in the night. Joel, I received a message for you very clear. The Lord said, you are holding a righteous sword. Don't exchange it for anything. I see people around that will want to come in the name of association. He said, be careful. He said, it's a real sword. You can't miss it. It's a sword that is not exchangeable. I see a blazing sword of righteousness. And the sword is also a sword of judgment. And I hear the Lord say clearly to me, clearly. I can hear the Lord clearly in my right ears. Do not exchange that sword. It is the sword of the Lord's deliverance. If you do, you have bondaged a generation. That is the word of the Lord expressed. He say, hold it. Hold it. Guard it jealously. Is a sword of righteousness. Hey. Oh my God, what I'm seeing here is what I'm seeing here is too much. There are three young men that will be saddled with an uncommon grace for teaching. The kind of downloads they will bring from the world, even though primarily they are going to operate as evangelists, but their teaching grace will be uncommon. There are three of them three young men i want to put my hand hand on them i want to put my hand on them because the lord is saying you are an apostolic evangelist there is something you have that must be communicated to them i want us to help me identify those three there are three young men at the count of three in the next three seconds one two three yes bring them to me here bring them to me here please bring them to me bring them to me bring them to me here bring them to me here bring them to me here just help them help them help him help him up Thank you, Jesus. Where are the other two? Bring them. Jesus. Bring that guy there. Bring him. Bring him. Help him. Help him. Bring him. Bring him. Jesus. Bring that one. That's the one. That's the one. That, yes, bring that guy. No others have received but the main person power Jesus. Apostle our hearts shouldn't be troubled God is raising an army there is an army that is rising healing evangelists apostles are rising I see 12 of you coming under the power of a strong apostolic function 12 of you now now by my love of my right there is power let 
the power of God be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. Yes, that's it. That's it. He's stronger. There is a rain. There is a rain of power. 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 When you are here, 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 when you are here. of you that will be raised as priestesses prophetic intercessors that the Lord will use their voices to silence every demonic altar in Abuja there is, an, there is a prophetic alarm that will be planted in your spirit there are 14 of you young ladies 14 of you 14 of you 14 of you, 14 of you, put your hand on your stomach and I will count seven. At the count of seven, the anointing will come on the 14 of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Wherever, yes, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, 14 of you under the power. Prophetic intercessors. Prophetic intercessors. Prophetic intercessors. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. Just help them. Just help them. There are 14 of them. They are going to quench demonic altars. Just help them. Just help them. There are 14 of them. There are 
eight more ladies, there are eight more. There are eight more. They are prophetic intercessors, prophetic intercessors. There are 14 of them. There are 14 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 14 of them. Help me confirm the numbers. There are 14. Now I want to pray for healing right now as we close. In the name of Jesus, I stir up the healing waters right now. I bind blinding spirits, deafening spirits, paralyzing spirits, crippling spirits, hypertensive spirit, diabetic spirit, spirit of arthritis. Spirits behind my grain. Spirit of infirmity. Be bound in the name of Jesus. Constant headache. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Anyone that was sentenced to death. We are not such sentence. And we declare that you will live in the name of Jesus. My God, hold on, just reduce. I see, I see three people with the emblem of death, and I see September. A necromancer had concluded your death. As I was praying, I saw, and one of you is a lady, a woman. I can't see the two. And the irony is that I see September. The Lord brought you here to deliver you. And what they put on your head was like a basket. Uh, there's no time I won't call you out. You've been having a series of dreams involving dead relatives. And what will happen to that woman, the first woman I see is that they will remove the load. You are, you are by the middle side. You are by the middle side. They will remove that load. Let, help her. Yes, that's it. That sentence of death is cancelled. Now, Lord, extend your hand to the other two. Extend your hand to the other two. Extend your hand to the other two. Spirit of death, be bound. Be bound, be bound, be bound, be bound. Release them now. Release them now in the name of Jesus. And every infirmity, every sickness is healed in the name of Jesus. Pastor Victor, I won't pray for you again because your blessing is complete. It's complete. I, I won't pray for you. I'm only led to pray for Prophet Joel. And it's a short prayer. Because you're a voice, Satan is not happy. You are a voice. Apostle, please, let's pray for this young man. Let's pray for this young man. I see a lot of attack coming up. And the reason is because there is an assignment. Satan will not succeed. I stand with my brother today. We uphold you. In the place of prayer you will not fail you will not be a failed prophet you will not express the merchandise of darkness those who seek after you will fall you are preserved this pure oil you are carrying will not be contaminated your head will lack no oil by the combination of this anointing i stand with my brother we release upon you strength, 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 strength. Your ministry will be known for strength. You will not fail. Even in the day of adversity, you will be stronger. In the name of Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you very much. I 
Ebenezer, 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 